Hello and welcome to the chat with the hat video and our topic is is it okay to do it wrong or is it okay to tell someone they're doing it wrong without actually being helpful. I hang out in the discord chat and I see people who are trying to learn the engine or programming and they come in every so often and they're pretty focused like for example how do I do this how do I do that. Less of how do I learn to do something and more of how do I actually get that done and they move on to the next thing. Now, if you're actually trying to learn in the long run, it's not as helpful as it could be because you're going to basically get narrowed down on what you can do and then you're going to get stuck and you're going to repeat the process. If you try to learn a large breadth of things or you try to learn how things work, then it helps out when you're trying to do things. It may take a little more time, but in the end, you become a, a more richer capable programmer. Now the problem I see is when people come in and they try to get things done the way they want to do it or the way they think it should work or even the way they are doing it and they just want help or they want advice or hey how does this look? More experienced programmers will tell them they're wrong. They're not going to be very helpful and they're just going to be like you're wrong, you did it wrong, that's not the right way to do it. And that's not necessarily true and it's not very helpful. So as a new person, if you're listening to this or watching this or, you know, reading this for some reason, just because someone tells you you're wrong doesn't necessarily mean it's the wrong thing to do. And don't take it wrong. It's okay to do things the wrong way or the inefficient way, especially when you're learning. Don't let it get you down. Don't let it stop you. I'm going to show you this right here. So someone was in the chat and they wanted to do something fairly simple. They wanted the ability to show text when you were near an object, kind of like you click on an object and text will show up. They wanted to recreate an effect from another game. Now there's a bunch of ways of doing this in Unreal Engine in straight in blueprints and in any programming language there's a bunch of ways of doing this. Now the way they were doing it was different than the way I would do it because I got more experience and I would like to use things in a reusable fashion. And it was different than the way someone else was trying to show them how to do it. And it was actually different than the way they were trying to do it because they were trying to learn by focusing in on these individual things. And the problem with that is it made a little bit of a disconnect when we tried to show them how to do it one way and they tried to do it their way. So let me show you that right here and understand that everything we see here isn't wrong. These are just different ways of doing the same thing. You iterate over a project based on your goals and that's important. Define your goals. So hopefully we can really quickly just run through this. I have a cube. I want some text to show up when I click on it. It's pretty simple. There's a bunch of different ways of doing it. If you're just starting out and maybe you've seen some basic informational things, you're probably not going to be too used to things like blueprints or events, uh, casting, interfaces. You're going to do things basically in your scene and in your blueprints, and that's fine. So in your level blueprint, which is your primary blueprint when you're just starting out, you might try to make stuff show up. And that's pretty simple. We could do things like we'll put a text in our scene. We can drag a text renderer in. We'll name this like, you know, my first clue. And I want to simply toggle the visibility on it. Let's move it and rotate it around a little bit. And we'll give it a little more panaz. There we go. So here's my first clue. And I want to change the visibility. Well, the first thing is, here's the visibility. Rendering it on and off. Cool. Not a problem. It's off. How do I make it on? Well, you need to toggle the visibility. Well, if you're in your blueprint, you could do something like toggle visibility well that's not working well yeah contact sensitivity here we go toggle visibility we need a scene component okay what's a scene component how do you get this actual text renderer playing around with blueprints for a bit you may realize that you can simply drag stuff in and that's one of the advantages of when you work in the level blueprint you get used to be able to drag stuff in from your scene so we'll drag our text renderer in here we go and we hook it into our target night Unreal Engine allows us to convert things automatically. And there we go. Now we can toggle the visibility whenever we want to. But now we need to know how to toggle the visibility. How are we going to trigger this? Well, we when we click on it. Okay. Uh, click. What? How can we click on stuff? Well, we have click method and 
enable clicking events and actor on click. Okay, actor on click. I like that one. Let's try that one. Um, so we'll go back to that one. Actor on click. Cool. But we don't have any definition of which actor. Well, again, Unreal Engine, case sensitive. If we actually click on our cube and then do the same thing, now it's going to give us the ability to context sensitive add an event just for that cube. So now when we click on this cube, we can do something. Cool, not a problem. We hook it up, we run. Uh, okay, shouldn't it be working? No, it's not, it's not working. Then we do some more research. We figure out, well, we need to turn on clicking because it's not turned on by default. So we have to actually get our controller and we have to enable click. We found that out by accident when we were rolling things. So here we go, enable click. We need to actually do this at some point. So let's do this when we begin play. Here we go. So begin play, uh, toggle visibility. Okay, cool. We'll go over here, we'll click on it. And it's not work up. Oh, wait, wait, hold on, it worked. But wait, I can't repeat it. Well, yeah, just cause you can't see the mouse doesn't mean the mouse doesn't move. So again, trying to figure that out. Eventually you'll figure out that's what's causing the problem. Okay, um, we have the ability to set the mouse position into the middle of the screen. Whoops, that's not the right way to do it. We need our player controller. And then we'll set the mouse position. Where do we set it to? Oh, we can't do it on begin play because every time we move the mouse, it changes. So we have to actually do that on our tick. So we'll put that in here. Then we need to figure out the size of our screen. Well, you know, we're just, at this point, we're frustrated. We're just going to guess at the size of our screen. I know it's 1280 by 720, so we'll do 640 by 360. Now we'll do this again, and then look. Oh, there we go. Now it's centered to the screen, and it's working. Great, it's working. Uh, unfortunately, it's only going to work if it's this size. Maybe we'd have to, you know, then you'd have to figure out things like accessing your viewport and getting your viewport size and then getting half of that and scaling things appropriately. Then you have DPI, and you've got this giant mess. Um, now we want to have another one because we want to have maybe five different clues. We'd have to add another text renderer into our system. We'd have to have another click event just for that one. We'd have to have five or ten click events. And we're going to get this giant mess. Then it's like, okay, uh, wait. Once you show the text, I want a sound to play. Oh, crap. Now i got to go back in and add sounds to everyone. And then do I want different sounds? Maybe I want different effects. Maybe I want different things to happen. Now, throughout all this, if you're an experienced programmer, you probably have already figured out how you would have done this in the first place. And that's great. If you're a new person, though, you're, like, going to get stuck at multiple places. But then at some point, you might get to this point, and you're like, it works, and you're happy, and you're going to move on. And that's great. You've done nothing wrong, and I want you to understand that. There's nothing wrong with what I've done here. It's not the most efficient thing in the world, sure. But you know what? It works. I can aim at the box, and I can toggle by clue. Simple as that. That was my goal, and it works. Now, as you're moving on, you'll try to do other things. You'll try to make things extendable. Maybe you'll work on blueprints. Maybe you'll work on things like interfaces. So you might graduate to something else. You'll be thinking, okay, I need to repeat this stuff. Well, hold on a second. Sorry about that. I had a cough. So... You'll learn about blueprints, and you'll be learning on creating blueprints. So we'll call this one our hint box, because I have no better name. And you'll design your hint box. It's going to be the same thing as before. Here's a cube, and we'll make a text renderer. And we should probably make our text actually up here somewhere like that, and then we can make it centered. We'll learn about variables and items like that. So we'll know that our text renderer, for example... We want to show something. So we'll know that we could grab our text renderer and we'll set the text on the text renderer. We'll set it to a variable. That way we could change it. So we'll do this. We'll do promote to variable. Oh, there we go. Now we've got a variable and this will be our text, our hint. And we'll call it hint text. And we'll make it instance editable. So now it's going to show up and we'll do this as our default. So now in theory, this item, if we were to drag into our screen, there we go. We now have a default box with default text. But because we've learned that we now have something called instances, we have different boxes, which contains their own set of variables. Uh, let's rotate this one over. And we have it exposed. So this one could be, for example, our third clue. And this one over here, well, we can click on it. And this will be our, I don't know, eighth clue. And we'll use the number, because why not? 
now we have something that's reusable and easy enough to drop in. We still can't do anything with it, but then we learn things like custom events and the interfaces. So now that we have it looking like this, you know, we can make a custom event. Actually, technically, we have our um, we have our clicked. So we could always have done something like, in theory, I think this will work on clicked, and we'll do uh, toggle. Oh, that's toggle active. That's not what we want. Let's go with the text renderer and toggle visibility. And, you know, based on what we used before, I think this will work, like out of the box. Let's see. Yeah, see, there we go. See, so I can toggle the visibility on these items by reusing the code that I used inside of my blueprint, inside of my level blueprint. This code, uh, actually, none of this code is just simply the fact that I'm using the click, the built-in click to toggle things. Okay, cool. So now that we can click on them, we could do anything we want individually. We could toggle the visibility. We could change the text. You could run particle effects. But now you have something inside of your blueprints that you could run. And you can make it customize an individual, maybe play an individual sound or whatever. But we've got reusable things, so we no longer have to have all this code. Well, technically we need this code because this is setting the mouse position and enabling click events. But we don't need a single blueprint with 15 different entries for 15 different items that we have to maintain. We just maintain one master blueprint, and that's the point of the blueprint. But then we might run into the issue where, okay, well... This is kind of weird how we're setting this every single time. We're setting it on tick. We don't know if it's straight or not. So we'll go ahead and disable things like this. This is when you move into things like learning about line traces. So in our first person character, for example, we could simulate a line trace. And this one's easy enough. We'll just find the fire event. We do the line trace. We'll do it by the channel. That way it's just anything we can see. Uh, we grab our first person camera. We'll get the world location for our starting point, and then we want to get our forward vector so that we know which way we're facing. We'll multiply this by a thousand, so that way we go forward a thousand. We add our starting vector to our end vector like this. Put that into our end. Well, we'll make sure we can draw the debug. We'll put this in here. In theory, now I should be able to line trace forward. Yep, and it's so cool. So now we can line trace forward. We're not using the click event anymore. We're just using the hit event. So it's like, oh, something we hit. Okay, easy enough. So we'll break open our hit. We're learning about hits at this point. This is the item we hit. Well, everything we want to hit is going to be our hint box. So that's easy enough. We learn about casting. So we want to talk to something we hit. We're not going to use our click event anymore, but we can make a new custom event called uh, was hit because why not and now we've got custom events being working on we'll go back to our character we'll call was hit so now anytime we hit a box anytime we hit anything but a box nothing will happen because it'll fail anytime we hit the box we'll call was hit cool we should be able to recreate this we go back in here we fired our boxes there we go look now they're working like we expected before and if we hit other things, it's not going to happen. Okay, cool. We're good here. We've still done nothing wrong. Other people may say, oh, you shouldn't do that. You don't have much reusability. What if you're going to do something else? What if, for example, you want to be able to hit other items, not just hint boxes, maybe triggers, maybe switches? And you're thinking to yourself, oh, but it works for me. Don't get discouraged. You didn't do it wrong. You are learning, and you're iterating over it. So it's like, okay. You want to do it next, so you have things like interfaces. So you might want to create a new interface. So, you know, we'll call this one interface. Uh, can do something, because why not? And this one has a new function in here called do something. And simple as that. So anything I want to do something, now I can check against an interface. So in here, for example, hit actor, and then we go implements interface do something now if we hit something that can do something so we'll do an if event do, do, do. move this back over here now we can do something with the item that we hit right here and we don't even have to ask it specifically if it's you know cast it to a box cast it to a switch if it can do something now it can do something generically so we can go back to our hint box we can tell it our hint box now does something by doing something. Where's our interface? What do I call it? Interface do something. There we go. So now we have do something. So if we look in here, we should have our do something interface event. 
right here. And it's got a little icon saying, yeah, that's special. <laughs> we'll hook that one up. So now we have three different ways of activating this thing. And we're good there. And then we'll go back to here and we'll say, yo, do something. We don't care if you can or you can't. Just go ahead and try to do something. And we'll go back to here. And in theory, these things should start working again. Oh, look, they're working again. But now we have interfaces. So now I could do something else. I could have, instead of a BP hint box, I could have a BP switch a -roo. And we'll drag our switch a into our scene. And our switch a is going to be a sphere because we already used a box. And I don't know. We'll have it destroy itself. But the nice thing is we can just do our interface for do something. And we'll go back into here and we'll go, I want to do something. I want to spell do something right. And we'll add that event. And we'll simply destroy ourselves. De we'll try to destroy ourselves if we can learn how to spell it. There we go. And we'll destroy ourselves. And that's it. So we can go over here and with the same thing, we can toggle these. Or we can destroy that when we click on it. Or well, technically we did a line trace. We're not using click anymore. But it's all iteration. And none of these things are wrong. And even this last one isn't necessarily the best. You're not really checking for validity. You don't have too much custom inheritance or implementation. We're not even using things like inheritance. Where we have a master class that you could do stuff with. And then subclasses, children. Where we can do other things. But the point was... We started with something simple, and even though it was wrong, according to other people, it got done what we wanted done, and we learned from it. And we didn't let what people are saying get us down. We got to our goal, and our goal was just having text show up when we clicked on it. And then we learned, as we kept iterating, maybe we want to do more, or maybe we want to do better, or maybe more performance, or maybe we don't. Maybe we just want to leave it like it was. It was a one-off thing. Literally two things in one spot in the entire game, and then we're done with it. We don't need to spend, I mean, I'm at 17 minutes on the video. I've spent probably 13, 14 minutes of programming. Seven or eight of it probably was doing this, the more fancier stuff. So, I mean, you didn't, maybe you didn't want to spend that much time. Maybe you just literally want to spend five minutes. The entire point of this video, though, was... If we go back to our front slide, is it okay to do it wrong? In my opinion, yes, it is okay to do it wrong. If someone tells you you did it wrong, but it's functioning, and that's kind of a key here, it's working. Hopefully they're showing you how to do it a different way, or they help you do it better or more efficient. But just because someone tells you it's wrong, you shouldn't take that as a hint that you shouldn't do it that way or that's not the right way to do it the way you're doing it is simply a different way of doing it and as long as you learn from it and you don't let people get you down doing it wrong is okay just keep that in mind nothing wrong with doing it wrong